Hey guys, welcome back. Part number eight of my F14A build. So this week's all about weathering. So we're going to get a pound line wash on and start working with some neat oils. So we've got plenty to do, so let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about weathering. So we've got this guy painted and decaled and all looking good. So now we're going to make it kind of dirty it up a little bit. So first thing we're going to do is, if you've seen my videos, follow my channel, you know, you kind of know the MO. I use, use a wash. So I'm going to use a Flory Dark Dirt wash, which I use 99% of the time. So this is just the wing, just painted, decaled, not weathered. Now this is one I've added the wash to like a couple of hours ago. Just see the difference, how, see how the pound lines pop out? Especially on the back here. I think you see a difference on the camera there. So it just makes the lines pop and just kind of, I mean, you've got multiple colors, it makes it blend better too. So different ways of using the wash. I use a nice gloss coat first and then apply the wash. So it means when I wipe it off, it just leaves just in the pound lines pretty much. Um, if you put more of a satin or a matte coat, it's gonna stick up, it'd be hard to get off, it'd be more dirty. But I like to use oils for that kind of part, part. So I really just want it just for a pound line wash. So again, differences. And then I did the tails too. Um, this is what I did. And this one I didn't do. Not sure if you can see that so much. Um, but again, you can see it on the bottom here. See how it picks out the lines a little bit better. So super easy to do. This spot is almost finished. So I'm just gonna pour some in a bottle. And actually I'm gonna add a drop of water. So just give me two seconds, let me just go to the sink and just fill this up with water and I'll come right back. All right, back. So just to add the tea, it's a tiny little bit of water, mainly because this bottle's done now, it's pretty much empty. So it's all the sediment stuck at the bottom. Um, also I find with a little bit of water, it just come off easier too. So just give it a little stir. And all you do is just brush this stuff on. I mean, there's no science to this or skill required, you just brush it all on. And the other side, just be messy, don't have to be tidy. And this is clay based. If you don't like it, just use some water, wash it all off and go again. It's different colors. Dark dirt kind of works good for um, modern aviation, especially the gray kind of color, the gray colors. That's it. Easy as that. I mean, that's not difficult at all. Just splodge it all on. Then I'm just going to put it to the side somewhere. Let's rest up here and leave it. So I'm just going to leave that for. Let's see how the rest of that. I'm just going to leave that for about half an hour to dry. And when it's dry, we're just going to come back with a paper towel and just wipe it off. Um, so while um, I guess while that's drying a little bit, let's do the rest of the aircraft. Um, to start with the upper side and it is important to definitely seal in your decals too so you know when you use that paper towel and wipe them off so I gave a good coat over all my decals so hopefully they're not, it's not going to kind of strip, strip them all off when you come to wipe off the wash all over Again, nothing difficult about this. Just cover the whole thing with a brush. Oop. Dropping it. And it's gonna pick out all the pound lines, all the rivets, if you have rivets on the aircraft. Again, that's easy as that. So just bludge it all on everywhere, and then we'll just wipe it off in half an hour or so. So that's that bit done. Um, let's go over the canopy, make sure everything's all weathered the same. 
Cool. So I'm just going to let this dry, and then we'll come back and we'll start to wipe all this stuff off in like 30 minutes. All right, it's been about 20, 25 minutes or so, and you see, the wing here, it's it's dry. So, just gonna, actually, yeah, it's dry. And then take a little bit of paper towel ripped up, and you can rub it off like that. Or if you need to bring a little bit more and just lick it, or dip it into water. It'll come off a little bit quicker. What I'm going to do is with this piece, I'm take the bulk of it off, and then I'll get another piece and come back in with the um, to get kind of get a lot more of this dirt off. Because I want I want it grimy and dirty, but I don't want it you know caked in mud or anything like look. So okay, and then I'm just going to go. I'll take the most of it off, 95 percent, and then anything left over, I'm just going to swipe the direction of the airflow. So go backwards. And there you go, easy as that. And there you can see some panel lines, you can see all like the what well, you can see on the camera there, but just makes things pop a little bit more. Um, if I try here on main fuselage, let's do a bit of the back. You can see all the rivets. If you go back, at, you know, two minutes back on the video and just see how it looked like before I put this on, you'll see a big difference. It makes, just makes it pop. See all the area. Um, and it's up to you how much you remove. I mean, you can move a lot or just a little bit. You can also sand this stuff off if you want to go that way. I just like brushing off, rubbing it off. I know from, from previous experience with Tomcats, these decals here, I always be very careful. Even though I sealed it, not often when I rub the wash off, I always rip them so I could be very careful with this and be very gentle. So I don't want to rip this off again. Um, as I have done previously, so easy as that. So I'm just going to go through the whole aircraft um, and just wipe all this stuff off and then we'll come back when I'm done and I'll kind of show you kind of how it looks. Right, so everything's off. No problem at all. Forgot to mention, but any of these kind of tiny areas, use a Q-tip, just wet it or some water, you just in your mouth or whatever and just get rid of some of the dirt around the outside. But um, we're looking really good. Just sit those a bit right here. Just rubbing it off. Very cool. So yeah, just slot the wings on to get like the look. But really look happy how it's turning out. Um, hopefully you can see what it's done. Let me take the canopy's loose. Let me take it off so I don't drop it. Um, but you can see all those power lines. Let me turn all these lights out because I got bright light right now. So let me turn the light out. You might see it a little better. And maybe that's a little better. It's more subtle. Turn out. There you can kind of see how it's all power lines are picked out. And the underneath. So it's that really the gloss really just gives you that, that nice kind of panel line look. It doesn't it takes out all the detail, pulls out all the details. It doesn't make it ultra grimy or dirty or anything. Um, the whole reason I put that gloss coat on. It's very cool. So let's light back on now. Um, so we're done with this part of the, the weathering, the first stage, which is the um, the wash. See, there's some stuff. Grime stuck inside the, you know, here the flaps and stuff. But I'm actually going to leave that because it actually adds to what I want to do later on. Um, so, next up is to get the whole thing, everything sprayed with XF86, trusty flat clear. Not going to hose this on, just so I still. Most aircraft do have like a satin finish, so I'm just going to, you know, mist it on, um, but not light, you know, medium mist. Get everything covered, and the reason I do that is because for the oil paints, they need something to grip to, some texture. Right now, it's smooth glossy if I put oils on it, it just won't work it'll just wipe right off when I try to kind of um, blend it and work it on the surface so it needs that texture from a, what you get from a flat 
um, creating all those little textures on here. So when I put the oils on and work with it, it's actually going to stay where I want it and it's not going to rub immediately off and be pointless using it. So I'm going to let this just sit for a couple of hours. Um, actually, it's kind of late at night now, so I'll probably leave it overnight and then tomorrow morning, first thing I'll hit it with the XF86. And then we'll come back once that's dry after a couple of hours and we can start working with the oils, which will be the second stage of um, weathering on this. Right, so the, the XF86 flat coat's way cleared. Um, been busy all day with the kids, so it's later in the day. So more than dried. Um, to be honest with you, this is a perfectly acceptable way it is in terms of weathering, I think. Um, but I kind of like to take it up a little notch. Um, so 99% of people probably leave it as is, but I like to add the oils just to get a little bit extra grime and stuff. Um, but if you want a clean up version, then I guess you leave it like this and glue the parts on, you're done. So anyway, so next stage, well actually, let me take a step back. Um, when I sprayed the XF86, I didn't have the needle in fully, and it happens to all of us, so I sprayed it and I got a ton of stuff over here, and I had like a big tide mark down. So let it dry, not panic, and what I did was, as I mentioned in, in the painting video, this little Tamiya sponge, you just cut it off. Um, this is 3000 grit, which is perfect for sanding off um, paint. So I, I had a little bit chunk left over from the 3000 grit I just cut off um, on the bench here. So I just literally just rubbed it very gently and it removed that tie mark and it smoothed it out perfectly without damaging the paintwork underneath. So 3000 grit Tamiya sponge, a big fan. Um, so yeah, so I did have, a, yeah. So I've got a problem, but I fixed it. So like I said, it's all splurged down here. I just cleared, cleaned it off with this and it's good to go. So that's that issue I fixed. Um, so all right, so let's move to the next and final stage of weathering, which will be the oils. So this is gonna be no surprise to my followers on my channel who've seen the other videos. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the um, 502 Aptalong oils. Uh, this time I'm actually gonna switch it up and use Starship Filth. I typically use smoke for most stuff, but I'm just thinking smoke on this very light gray color and the white is gonna be a little bit too harsh. So I'm gonna dial it back a little bit with a Starship Filth, which is more of a, I think it's more of a browny kind of color than a darker. Um, but it's a pretty good color. Now, I probably have about 15, 20 of these 502 oils, and to be honest, I use like three colors. Um, a lot I don't use, to be honest. I have a lot of like mud colors and browns and stuff I just don't use. Um, I use smoke, um, faded yellow, which is really orange for like hydraulic leaks and stuff, and then this Starship Filth now and again too. Um, these last forever, they're not that expensive either, they're probably five, six dollars each, but you, as you see, I use a tiny little amount, about the size of a pea, um, so it's not going to, yeah, it's last forever. My smokes, I use it all the time, and I've had it a few years, and it's barely t dented. Um, so these are good investments, really good high quality, makes a difference. Um, Windsor & Newton do good stuff too, but the cheap artist stuff, I mean, it's not going to work so good, so it's worth paying extra, especially spend all this money on the kit and spend all this time, it's, you know, it's better get a better product. So use this. Um, in terms of thinners, you want enam it's enamel products, you want enamel thinners. Again, you don't want like the cheap like Home Depot or B&Q, wherever you are in the world, kind of cheap stuff. You want something a little bit more refined. I happen to have some of the 502 odorless thinners, which is really good, which actually matches it. Um, AK also do the oldest thinners, or just the Tamiya enamel thinners, but I think it's like a blue top. Um, that works perfectly good too. So any kind of decent enamel thinners, you need very little of this too. So word of warning, this a little drop of this will basically clean and wipe off the whole, the whole thing on the aircraft, so you're using this sparingly. So that's, we'll use that. Um, we've got a few brushes of various types. Um, I've got one, kind of very soft one for kind of blending. This one's a little bit stiffer, it's getting a little old now. It's, this is cheap from like Michaels or somewhere like that. Um, chisel Blender is actually what it's. This one is a AK579. I really like this brush. Um, and these are just a couple of cheapy ones. I'm putting it, like smaller ones, just kind of put it on and use these guys to blend it and mix it in. So the brushes, you can use, then you need a little bit of um, cardboard or paper towel. I use paper towel. The thing is I notice a lot of people in videos I see online with using this method, put a little bit of oil down, they have a huge pour of like linseed oil and draining off on here. I, I never get that. I'm not, I'm not sure why, but um, yeah, I never really get a massive amount of like excess oil when I drain it. But anyway, so that, and then another really good tip is, I get these from Amazon. All they are one ounce cups with lids, like sort of like for dips and stuff. And these are great, you get a hundred for like five, six dollars. And I use, the, they like little shot glasses, so I use actual cups for mixing paint, which you've seen before, I think on videos. Um, and then the lids work really good too. So for this kind of thing, I want a tiny little bit of thinners. So the lids has a little 
perfect for this, you know, for a little bit, and uh, even for like putting super glue on or, or paint, that kind of stuff. So I find these really handy. So again, from Amazon, these are one ounce cups with lids. I think they're designed for like salsa or like to go dip, like dips and that kind of thing. Um, again, these are like five, six dollars for a hundred. That uh, lasts me like a year. Right, so that's kind of my st stuff here. So let me kind of just kind of move my bench around a little bit so I can kind of get this in shot. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this oil. I'm just going to squeeze it. Barely anything comes out. There you go, and that's it. That's all I need. That would come with the whole aircraft, all the wings, everything. Um, I'm not going to go super crazy on this one. I'm going to weather it up. I'm not going to make it like a junkyard. So I'm just going to stick to one color and just try to keep it a little bit more subtle where I can. Now the oldest thing is I'm just going to pour into the uh, a tiny little drop is all I need. Okay, and I should have got a pipette because it's not well, it's stuck around the edge. That's probably enough. Um, oh, another thing I've always had too is Q-tips. I always get the Johnson's baby ones because they don't have a lot of fluff. It's actually a brand new box, I think. But um, yeah, the, the, the usual Q-tip brand you get in Target and stuff, get a little fluff and linty. These, these are really good. They don't um, give much lint off. They're hard to get in the US. I normally get on eBay, to be honest with you. And it's, um, again, one of those products I get from England. It's like two or three dollars. So I'm not sure how, how they can do that, how the shipping and stuff. But I go to eBay and get the Johnson Baby Bird. This is box 200. And again, just a few bucks. And they last a long time. Um, so yeah, I need one of those too. So, all right. So that's kind of my setup. So let me kind of talk a little bit about how I do it. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take a small brush and what, uh, I guess I'll do it while I explain it. So I'm going to take a little bit of oil. But I'm just going to wipe off the excess. And then I'm just going to trace along a line, um, a few pick out a few panel lines. So you see how it's like crisscross down here? This is a perfect way to kind of add some weathering. So. See, I'm just literally painting it on. This brush is really kind of old and crispy kind of you kind of hear it and what I did do there if you saw I, I did dab it a little bit in some thinners just to kind of get it so it wasn't get it kind of flowing a little bit so I did those and then I'm come down I'm gonna do crossways Maybe a little too much there and a little goes a long long way on this stuff Okay, then I'm going to take my blending brush. Okay, to this one. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub it like that backwards and forwards to blend the line in. So I'm just going to follow the line. And everywhere I put paint right there, I'm just going to rub it in and blend it. The other brush too. And if you find yourself done a lot too much, you can just come in with the um, Q-tip, dip it a little bit thinners, and again, a little bit goes a long way here, and just you know, rub it off. It rubs right off. It's easy as that. Then just come and blend it again. And that is it. I mean, as easy as that. Um, it's not much skill or anything to it. It's just literally just knowing, you know, to keep keep the paint low. Um, and then, not, and if you do put too much on, just rub straight off enamel thinners. So let me pick out one of these kind of lines here to actually went a little bit too much on that side, maybe, but we'll see. And I'm not going to pick out every single panel line. Just a few, just to kind of accentuate the detail a little bit. So rub those guys. Switch blend back in. 
And what you find too is this is going to mellow out over time too. So as it dries, it kind of mellows. So it's not going to be quite so harsh. Drying time on this, I'm typically good to go in about a day. Some people say four or five days, um, up to a week maybe. But again, I'm not putting tons of this stuff on. So I find pretty much to the touch, it's normally good in a day. And there you go. So if I hold it back a little bit, once I kind of blend it a little bit more, you can see how it kind of all adds some really nice weathering and some touches up. So I'm just, so I'm just going to go work my way around, just keep working on this, keep blending it back. And again, if it looks a little strong, just come, come in with like a, the Q-tip and just rub a little bit off. And blend it back in again. Cool, so let me work around here, the upper wings. The wings don't have many panels, so it'll just be a few touches here and there. Um, another thing is you, can, you put like a dot and then just drag it back and create streaks, that kind of stuff. So I'll go ahead and work around some of this stuff. You don't need to sit and watch me for 35 minutes doing this, but um, once I've made a little bit of progress, I'll come back and kind of show you where I'm at. And we're done. So it's the following morning, I did it last night. Um, the oils let it dry overnight and mellowed, it's mellowed out nicely and kind of happy how it looks. Not too crazy. Just kind of picking out some stuff here. So let me kind of just hold it at different angles so you can kind of see it. It's kind of big lump. Even though it's 48 scale, it's really like a 30 second scale jet. It's just, I mean, it's real life thing so big. And there it is. And obviously done the tails. Now let me just try again turning the light off so you can see it more natural light. And maybe so this is no light, so you can kind of see it maybe a little bit better, more natural. Cool. So that's it. Oh. So I obviously went around with Starship Filth, and what I did in the end too, I totally forgot to mention, but um, I did decide to go with some dark faded yellow, faded dark yellow, which is also, well, which is basically orange, like on the packet there. So this is hydraulic leak color. So I didn't go crazy and cover the whole thing in hydraulic leak, just you know, a couple of subtle things here and there, a couple on the bottom, um, a couple on the wings, just kind of add a little bit more color and interest to it. So yeah, so we're done with the weathering. So that this part's over. Um, most of the work's now done. Um, those of you who keen eyes, don't worry. Um, I've not going about the wheel wells and there's some little detail painting I'll do next that's the next thing to do so next week we're gonna wrap this up we're gonna come back and we're going to get all the final pieces on like get the engines attached the tails get the landing gear on and um, be ready for a final reveal so next week will be the last part um, and we're coming to the end on this one so it's been thoroughly enjoyable to build thus far fingers crossed to get all the gear and the bay doors and stuff on without breaking anything um, and then get this ready for a final reveal so thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And until next week, have a good one. Goodbye.